Welcome to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach when working with clients. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Healthy Kids Cookbook, 100% kid-approved recipes for the whole family. My kids and I actually wrote the cookbook during the pandemic, and it is available on Amazon. In this brand new podcast, we will be teaching you how to take one step at a time to becoming the healthiest version of yourself. Today, I'm so excited to be sharing the story of Kenny Daniels. What I love about his story is that his coach created a plan for him that was so simple. People think if they want to be successful with losing weight, you have to change all the things right now. But in reality, he did the exact opposite of that, and he lost over 60 pounds in seven months. Yep, 60 pounds. Can you imagine losing that much weight in only seven months? That's nothing. He said it over and over again. It was so, so simple. And we're going to be talking exactly what he did during this podcast. It really came down to one thing his coach being consistent with trickling information to him and not overwhelming him with too much at one time. That is our goal at Healthy Subs Nutrition. I personally have a goal that I want clients to tell me, that's it, that's all you want me to do? Yep, that's it. Be consistent with that one thing and then I promise I'll add the next thing to the plate. In this episode, Kenny and I discuss his journey to losing over 60 pounds in seven months, how his coaches, Sarah and Melinda from Portside Fitness helped him and what was vital to his success when changing his lifestyle completely. We'll get to this episode right after this message. Do you know someone that's looking to get healthy this year? We would love for you to share this podcast with them. You never know who could use some words of encouragement. Take a screenshot post it on social media, and please don't forget to tag us at Healthy Steps Nutrition so your friends can find more awesome free help. Also, please don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss another episode. Enjoy this story with Kenny Daniels. Kenny Daniels, welcome to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Thanks. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to share your story. You are a nutrition and PT client of Portside with Sarah and Melinda, who have run HSN for a while. Melinda is actually part of our mentoring staff, and and you just have such an inspiring story that we had to get you on this podcast and share it. I'm so excited to share it. It's been a life changing six months. That's for sure. Something uh, I didn't think. I was capable of, and um, I've achieved the goal I set, and I'm I'm continuing to uh, make progress. So I'm excited to tell my story. I love it. So let's let's walk me back to six months ago. What prompted you to come to the gym? To be honest, the pandemic was a big catalyst in finally realizing I needed to do something. There were people my age who other than their weight issues uh, were having issues with COVID. And it really scared me being something that I I could have prevented. Um, And overall, I just wanted a a healthier life, a healthier attitude and a a healthier mentality. And I think this year was the wake up for me. I think it was a wake up for a lot of people. I think we've seen so many trends of like, hey, I'm stuck at home. I have no idea how to cook. I have no idea what's right for me to eat and I need someone to help me. So you signed up for personal training and ended up being a part of the nutrition program as well as Sarah. So walk me through what were your goals? Like what was what did success look like to you 6 months ago? You hit, you said I hit my goal. What was that goal? Well, I, I had several goals. Um the the first one is going to sound a little uh a little uh, funny, but I, I wanted to be able to walk into a clothing department and actually buy something that I liked because of the way it looked instead of just being able to to fit me, to find something that was in my size. That was uh, a goal. Also, I had a number in mind of, of where I thought I should be weight-wise, where I thought I should be in order to be healthy. And that, uh, that was another goal. Also, 
I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a caregiver for, for my father. And that played a big part in this, uh, this progression because I need to be able to, to take care of him. And if I'm not taking care of myself, you know, he needs me or other people need me, then, then, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm just letting everyone down. And, um, it was, there were a lot of goals, but, but that was my mindset going into that and the pandemic. And I just knew it was time for a change. I love it. I think your first goal of like, Hey, I want to be able to walk into a store and buy what I want and feel confident wearing it. Right. Like I want to, I want to feel good. We had someone on the podcast who's lost 200 pounds recently. And she said, her biggest success was being able to walk into her closet and pick anything that she wants in her closet and feel like I can rock this. So I think (laughs) we all want to feel that way, right? We want to feel confident in the clothes and in our skin, right? Yes. It's, I mean, it makes a huge difference just waking up and and being able to uh, feel good about how you look and, and to take on the day with that kind of mentality. It, It really gives you a, an edge going out into the world. And, and it, it's helped a lot. It's improved. I can't think of an aspect of my life that it honestly hasn't improved. That is incredible. Let's take a deep dive into that. So what are, give me some examples of things that have improved because of the weight loss. And we haven't even discussed how much weight we've lost yet. So maybe we should talk about that first. <laughs> so how much weight have you lost in the course of six to seven months? Uh, right now I'm at uh, 65 pounds. So Holy it's cow. roughly about 10 a month, but you know, Christmas hit, so it, it slowed down just a little bit, but, um, I made it through Christmas and yeah, I'm approaching 70 pounds. Wow. What's your end goal for how much weight you like want to lose in, in the end of all of this? I want to be able to keep a healthy range of, uh, 200 to 220. I, I don't want a specific number constantly, but I want to be able to monitor my, monitor myself. And when I reach my top threshold to be able to pull myself back, look at my choices and get to that weight again. And that way I'm not, you know, putting a goal out there that I can't meet because my weight constantly fluctuates. I love that. And the best part of losing 60 pounds is that it wasn't like you went on a super restrictive diet to do so. No, no. And and that was the problem before it, even the, the word diet, it, it, it brings up the idea of you can't, you can't do this, you can't do that. And um, Sarah and Melinda really helped me realize that it's it's not so much a diet as a, a lifestyle change. It's the uh, the power of, of, of knowledge of, of what the food does, what types of food you should be eating, how they help you uh, throughout your day, the health benefits. And, um, you know, a, a big thing is just being able to stay on this track, have this lifestyle change, but also when there are times where I may be celebrating or I may be going out, not making myself feel guilty because I, I eat something that at that moment may not be part of my, my lifestyle change, but I know that I'll get back on track and that I can enjoy myself. Absolutely. And you're, you hit the nail on the head, right? You, the more you think about diets and what you can't have, the more you automatically want to have those things, right? If I tell you, Correct. like, Kenny, we're not having any cookies now. We are going to figure out a way to have a cookie today, right? <laughs> Instead, like, okay, can we focus on a positive relationship with food? Can we focus on all the awesome things that we can have while having a healthy lifestyle? And if we want a little something when we're out for an event or Christmas or the holidays, then we have it and move on, Right. Exactly. It, and it, it really helps the stability of just life in general, because you're always going to be tempted. And if you know, if you have confidence that you know what you're doing, you know, you can get back to your routine. It, it kind of gets away from the guilt of giving in on a celebration or for Christmas, because you know, you can jump back and uh, it builds your self-esteem with your, with your nutrition and build your self-esteem about your health and it's easier to make the right decisions in the long run. I love it. You mentioned Sarah and Melinda both have really helped you on your journey. Walk me through, was this the first time that you've ever worked with a coach for fitness and nutrition? It was not back in 2008. Uh, I was able to lose some weight, but I, I did not have the nutrition aspect. I was simply going to the gym and working on my my fitness there and I did see some 
progress. But of course, it instantly the the weight instantly came back because if I uh, if I missed a day or even still going to the gym, the weight would never consistently drop because I wasn't making the right decisions nutritionally. I, I didn't have the knowledge then. Um, so. While I did have some success back then, it, it was not permanent. And I also felt like I was doing it for the wrong reasons. Whereas now with Sarah and Melinda, not only do I have the exercise and the gym training and I'm, I'm working on strength, but more importantly, the knowledge of proper nutrition and a healthy lifestyle. I mean, the, the gains are just just unbelievable. I love it. You know, I think their goal and all of our coaches, our goal is to keep it as simple as possible. And you are like saying everything that we hope for in a nutrition client. Like, I feel like this is a lifestyle. I feel confident. I feel like I can do this no matter what happens. And it starts out by what Sarah did at the beginning to build those, build that confidence with you. Right. Right. And the key was habits. I mean, it, it wasn't this overload of Everything that I'm doing now, if I look back seven months from now and I was required to do that on day one, I wouldn't have made it. But it's this habit of, okay, you, you know, you don't eat breakfast, you should. Let's talk about healthy breakfast. Let's work on that this week. Develop a habit of a healthy breakfast. Um, maybe two weeks later, we start developing other healthy habits. You know, de- develop healthy exercises at the gym. Maybe go to the gym once more during the week. You've gotten used to it once try twice a week, try this exercise. And before you know it, your life is nothing but healthy habits. And uh, you get so used to them that it doesn't seem overwhelming. You're right. You're 1000% right. If you keep it simple and you just focus on one thing at a time, you you start gaining confidence. You're like, yes, I can do this. This is this is happening. And, and I'm starting to see the results. And I think most of us, and it's not um, our fault because I think marketing companies do a really good job making it look like you should have you should lose ten pounds in ten days or these crazy numbers, but you've lost so much weight by really something so simple as one habit per week and focusing on something like the plate method, right? Correct. The the plate method is key. <laughs> it was so simple. Uh, Melinda and Sarah did a great job explaining it to me, and. It's it's easy, you know. I'm not I'm not a cook, or at least I'm not good at cooking. So that has always been an issue for me. You know, how do I? Because if you go out and try to get healthy meals, one, they're hard to find, and two, sometimes they're they're really expensive. So how do I cook at home and still uh, still feel like I'm getting nutrition and still feel like I'm living this healthy lifestyle? And they taught me that it's it's not complicated. I mean, I just. I fill up half of the plate with amazing veggies that I know are good for me. And I fill up the other half with a wonderful starch and lean meat. And there you go. It doesn't have to be something off of food network. It can be something that is just simple enough to, uh, to make me happy and, and uh, feel good about uh, my nutrition. I love that. You're right. Most people do not have a ton of experience in the kitchen. So (laughs) cooking the Food Network recipes might be just a little bit overwhelming (laughs) for most, right? What's your favorite favorite thing to cook right now? Or what's the simplest recipe you like to make um, using the plate method? Uh, I'd have to say I I really, I I tried grilling asparagus the other day. Okay, and and that was a lot of fun. Tasted great. I also um, I also got an Instapot, which I would recommend to anyone if if they're looking to uh, to spend more time at home cooking. Uh, you know, I'll cook some really nice brown, brown rice, and then what I'll do is I'll just take a dab of hummus and and mix it with the brown rice, and it's amazing taste. Maybe a little salt and pepper, and uh, yeah, that that has turned into my favorite meal for sure. I love it. Simple, right? And the Instapot's great totally because simple. it's super fast and most of us don't have all day to spend at home prepping and cooking a ton of meals, right? <laughs> Correct. It, exactly right. It's uh, In fact, I think I, I, I bought a second one so I can have two going at the same time. <laughs> it, it makes it so easy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of, of that. But even if you don't have an Instapot, I mean, the, the idea is, is super simple. You can go anywhere, uh, Sam's Walmart, find fresh vegetables. And this is because Melinda and Sarah 
spend so much time equipping you with the knowledge of what to look for uh, and, and, and what you can buy and, and, and making sure that you understand that it's, that it's not complicated. It really has changed my, my lifestyle. In fact, I was thinking about six months ago, um, my lunch for today might be a uh, drive through at Popeye's. And, but today it is asparagus with, well, what exactly I told you, asparagus with the brown rice and, and lean meat. And I'm looking forward to it. I know it's going to taste great and even better. My energy level is going to be sustained through the day because I don't have a huge carb, sugary overload. And all of a sudden I drop at two o'clock and try to cram coffee and, and wonder why I'm so tired. So, uh, yeah. And that's the problem that most people have, right? They haven't connected the dots between what I eat and how I feel. And when you can, finally that light bulb goes off. You're like, oh my gosh, my Popeyes or my sub with with chips is causing me to feel like crap in the afternoon. Now I all of a sudden don't want to have it, right? Yeah, it's amazing how how my body, or I guess everyone's body, it will get used to the, like you said, like the crap. And you don't realize that your body is tired because of it and that this feeling that you have can change by just changing what you eat. And uh, now that I've gotten used to what it's like to eat healthy, um, I, the energy throughout the day is more constant. I'm more productive, and, and my body just feels better. I, I, I feel better than I have since probably high, high school. Wow. So most people can't see you right now, but I, and you don't have to date yourself completely, but how many years has it been since you felt this way? Oh gosh. Well, I'm I'm 35 and the last time that I felt this good was probably 1920. So it's so, been yeah, some years. It it has. You just get used to to making those wrong decisions and you tell yourself next year or next week or next month or even tomorrow, but right now I'm just going to go to Popeyes because I need it. You know, you convince yourself and it's a cycle. And uh, I'm so happy I'm able to break the cycle, even if it is a 15-year cycle. That every year I'm telling myself it's the next year. <laughs> I finally, finally told myself it will be the next day, and it was the next day with Sarah and Melinda. Man, I have goosebumps right now. It's so incredible to hear how how your life has changed in so many different ways from taking a huge step and. It is a big step for a lot of people, right? You're right. Like so many people think, okay, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this the next day. And literally years goes by and you find yourself in a position where you think maybe I've gone too far when it's never really too far. Like you can make one simple change, be consistent with that one thing, and then add the next thing to the plate. Right. I think we get into a trap where we tell ourselves age is a barrier to progress. And, um, you know, at, at 35, there may be some people listen, listening that are older who, who think, well, you're still young, but still at 35, you know, you look at people younger who are making changes and you think, can I still do that? And that's, that's a trap that will prevent you from doing so much in life, not just with your weight or with your nutrition, but uh, any day that you make a change for the better is a better day than yesterday. I love that. I agree with you a thousand percent. So you, you went to the gym before and you've mentioned Sarah Melinda multiple times during this podcast. How important do you think it was to have a coach and a guide help navigate these new waters for you? Oh, um, it was probably the biggest factor. Uh, I think the reason why I was able to do it is because of the support, or I know it's because of the support of uh, the coaches at Portside. Uh, you know, there's an accountability factor that helped a lot with my nutrition. Sarah had me take a picture of what I was eating and send it to her. That idea that I was not letting her down is what, not wanting to let her down, is what fueled me to make the right changes. You know, it's it's kind of ironic that we're so quick to let ourselves down, but when we put it in someone else's hands and we say, okay, I don't want to let this person down. It's amazing. Uh, the change that can happen. Um, you know, and then I had support from my coworkers who also go to port side and my family who saw that I needed to make a change and supported me. And, uh, had it not been for that, 
I, I'm really not sure I would have had the success I had. It, it's it's super important to have a, a support group, and I'm learning that. I did not have that last time, and and this time I do. I'm so happy that you found them and that, yes, coaches are absolutely amazing. They're your guide and they've been able to help you navigate and just give you the knowledge and education that you need to make mindful decisions without even really knowing it, knowing that you needed that, right? Correct. I mean, I, I remember I went into uh, maybe two months after I started, I went into uh, the store and I was wanting to get something healthy and I thought I'll, well, I'll get some orange juice. But then I remembered a session with Melinda, a nutrition session. We were talking about the hidden sugars that can be found in orange juice. And sure enough, I looked at the back of it and I couldn't believe how much sugar was in the orange juice. I mean, I was better off eating a candy bar. So <laughs> I, I, I instead got some coconut water and made sure that I could read the back of the label and that it was healthy for me. But it's that kind of you're right. The marketing uh, is sugar is, is so addictive and it's hidden in just about everything, even things that look healthy. And if you don't have someone that gives you that, that knowledge and, and trains you how to uh, determine what's good for you, what's not, it can be easy to pick the wrong thing and think you're making the right choice. I've talked to so many clients that are shocked by things that they think are super healthy. And then they're like, what, what are you telling me? So I'm I'm so glad that you found that. The other thing that you mentioned in support, because we all know that support is more important than people think. And yes, you need a coach, but you also need that that circle around you to provide accountability and and the guidance and just again support. So you mentioned your coworkers. Talk to me about how they've helped you on your journey. They have been members of Portside for a while, and they are a good example of what it's like to live this lifestyle. I see them make healthy choices. I see them go to the gym. I see them work out. I see I see how much their life has improved because of it. So it was an influence and impressed me enough that I reached out to one of them and I said, do you think there would be enough room uh, for me at Portside? And of course there was. And Sarah contacted me within minutes of me saying that to a coworker. And she was on it from day one and and Melinda as well. But uh, having that having that influence from them really kickstarted me to uh, to make this change. And it also kind of showed me, you know, when when you when you sort of try to add more people into your life or, or surround yourself with people who are who are also trying to make the same change, it, there's this group mentality that can that can make it easier to succeed again, because you, you don't want to let people down. You, they see the change in you. They're, they're telling you how good you're doing and you really don't want to drop the ball. I love that. And you know, I think too, it's the positive, it's positive peer pressure, right? Like, okay, we want you to do well, but then you're also not tempted by, let's say you had friends that were doing the opposite, right? They're, they're, going out and drinking or doing lifestyle things that maybe are not in line with their goals. If you're constantly around those people, it's going to be tougher for you to say no every day, right? That a hundred percent correct on that. Um, when you surround yourself with even more temptation, it just, it overloads you. And it's important to have a good support structure that, that share the same goals and that can uh, remind you of the path you're taking and give you that support. Yes. I agree. All right. The last thing I want to bring up, and then I would love for you to give all listeners one tip who are thinking like, oh my gosh, your story sounds, sounds like me. You mentioned your parents at the very beginning when we talked about your why you said, Hey, I'm a caretaker and I need to be able to take care of them. And then you also just mentioned, um, them as part of your support system right? Like they're there to, to help you and they understand, Hey, this is really important to you in this season of your life, getting the help that, that you need. Like we all need help and it's okay to ask for help. Has this kind of trickled down to them too? Cause if they're, they're close to you and now you're eating healthier, is it, is it trickling down to people in, in your household? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, my main concern was was, you know, my father is, is 85 and he's got mobility issues. And my main concern was when I'm over there taking care of him and helping him, if he falls, can I stop him from falling and not injure myself? Or can I even 
pick him up if he falls. Um, that was a huge issue for me because I wasn't sure if I could do it. Uh, and now I'm confident I can. Un- unfortunately, we we did have an episode where he he lost his balance, but it was about five or six months into this lifestyle change. I was I developed strength. I, I had the proper nutrition, and I was able to to catch him and put him put him back up and sit him down. And it it felt like there was no no uh, consequence on my body whatsoever. It felt like a natural movement. I was able to make sure that he was okay and that I was okay. And then also, yes, they've seen the change in me. And, you know, Southern mothers, when you, when you come home every, it's always a feast, <laughs> you know, so um, it, they, but they have supported me uh, by limiting that kind of, uh, that kind of eating whenever I do, whenever I uh, eat with them, we, we try to focus on healthy options now. And they've actually benefited greatly too. Um, they're eating healthier because of, of my change and because of how it's influenced them. So they influence me. I influence them. It's a cycle and we're just growing together. I love that. I love that. And that's amazing that they've kind of adapted to understanding how important this is to you and that this lifestyle change and eating healthy. And now they've kind of transitioned because you're right. So many people and families, mothers, grandparents use food as comfort for their children and their grandkids. Right. But if you loop those people in to say like, Hey, this is the reason why this is how you can help me on my journey to becoming healthier. Can we limit those options that are really loaded with sugar and not have them all the time? Cause I am going to get tempted. I'm going to eat them and it's not helping me progress towards my goals. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. Um, I think the big thing was, uh, was there was always a, a big box of oatmeal cookies, like with the, oh. with the cream center oh. in the middle of the table when I would come home. And for six months, I have yet to see a box. Uh, and now there's, there's pears and, and grapes and pistachios and uh, all sorts of amazing, healthy options there instead. So it's, it's definitely, um, definitely influenced them. And it's helped me out a lot. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You know, you took this huge leap of faith to invest time, step into a gym, have a coach, and really like invest that time into soaking up as much knowledge as you could to empower yourself and know what's good for you and what's not. And you mentioned a couple of times like, hey, I have, this has not only helped me lose 60 plus pounds, but it's actually helped me feel more confident, gain more energy and so many other things, aspects of life. I know there's someone listening to this podcast that is like, I am maybe age, right? That you had talked about mm-hmm. or something is, is in their, in their way. What would you say to them to inspire them to take that step? Like you did. I would tell them, to make themselves uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is if, if we only did things that we felt comfortable with, then we would never achieve our goals. And that was a big mindset for me in the beginning. Thanks to Sarah and Melinda uh, is living in, in that fear of this is new. These are people here that maybe you know have less weight or are living better lifestyles than me they're doing things that i can't do there but you know what they're supporting me they're helping me they're pushing me to be a better person i can live in this uncomfortable state of mind i can push myself to become comfortable with these healthy habits and that was the key when i first started i i could not even run 100 meters without ice packs sarah had to bring out ice packs for my wrist <laughs> I was winded and now I can run well over a mile and still do a full CrossFit workout. Uh, So the, I think the change, the key is being able to put yourself in a position to where, yes, the mentality is this is uncomfortable. I'm scared. I'm scared if I can do it. I'm scared of what other people are going to say, fighting through that and making the right, the right choices and learning the right habits and then becoming comfortable with your new lifestyle as you see the progression. I love it. You've mentioned Sarah Melinda throughout this entire thing and you connected with them. You trusted them to help you. And you're like, Hey, I'm going to do what you say, because I know you're a few steps ahead of me in this process. And if I do this, I know the end results are going to pay off. And man, in seven months losing 
such a significant amount of weight, but more importantly, really shaping a healthy lifestyle so that you can maintain those results is, is absolutely incredible. Kenny, thank you for coming on the podcast, sharing your knowledge. I think you gave given some easy and simple tips that, that people who are listening to this can take action on. And I know that you're going to continue to do amazing things and inspire not only Portside, but people around the world. Thanks for having me. I hope you were inspired by Kenny's story. He didn't go on a super restrictive diet. He made changes one step at a time that helped him completely transform his health and his lifestyle. I love the fact that he said, I can't think of an aspect of my life that Sarah and Melinda haven't helped me with. That's amazing. As a nutrition coach, you really have to focus on that holistic approach. It's not just about what they eat. It's about how they manage stress. It's about exercise and movement. It's about support system. It's truly about creating a healthy lifestyle. A coach isn't there to just give you a diet plan or a meal plan. They're there to help support you every step of the way. And a great nutrition coach meets you where they're at and creates a customized plan that's simple and sustainable just for you. Shout out to Portside Fitness and their rock star nutrition team for empowering a healthy community one step at a time with the health help of Healthy Steps Nutrition. Are you looking for a nutrition coach? We would love to help you. We just released a new directory called HireANutritionCoach.com. In this directory, you will find a list of nutrition coaches and dietitians that use our program that is written and backed by the nutrition experts. These coaches have been through a training, coach evaluations, and have been using the platform for months. Some of them up to five years they've been partnered with Healthy Steps Nutrition. Make sure you click the link in the show notes to get access to free bonuses and to find a Healthy Steps Nutrition coach near you. Until next week.